Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, he, she, stays in them. Welcome back to another episode of Mies by Passion. And today on the wrap up, I have a special edition for you because this is exclusively for the Women's World Cup coming up in July of this year, 2023. Now, coming into the stories today, we did not have a good start at all because there has been a lot of federation discontent amongst the different national teams. And we start off in Canada, where there has been an attempted boycott by the Canadian women's team from the She Believes tournament due to budget cuts and pay disputes based on their own federations. Now, this is quite a shocking development due to the many advances that have been made in the past with teams such as Norway and the USWN team successfully lobbying for equal pay amongst both the men and the women. And now Canada do feel like it's their time to get a fair bite of the cherry. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Canadian women's team attempted to boycott the She Believes tournament that was held in the United States earlier this year. And in a release statement, it read, we are tired, tired of constantly having to fight for fair and equal treatment. This lack of support threatens to reverse the progress we've made as a soccer nation and send us back to obscurity. Now, this was due to the aforementioned budget cuts and pay concerns that have been brought up by the national team players, as the Canadian Federation has been accused of reducing the budgets for player development and for youth programs, which are undeniably stifling the growth and the further progress of the Canadian women's team from both the senior level to even the junior. Now, this boycott was said to be successful up until the Canadian players, and you won't believe this, the Canadian players were threatened with legal action from their very own federation, who said that their protest was not legal, and because of that, they could be lit litigated for one reason or another. And that's just crazy, because that's essentially biting your nose to spite your face. But unfortunately, because of those threats of legal action, the Canadian women's team eventually did show up for the tournament, but they continued their boycott, but instead of not playing, they chose to wear purple shirts that read, enough is enough, prior to their respective matches of the She Believes tournament, in addition to training with their shirts inside out, so as to not show the Canadian Federation logo. And crossing over to the European continent, we find that the same issues are being experienced by both the Spanish and the French national teams for the women's sides. Starting in Spain, where very equal and similar issues have been brought up by the Spanish players of the women's team because they have complained about there being a current issue with the infrastructures in place and that the players are often being overexerted which results in injuries by their coach. Now the coach in question here is Jorge Vilda who has been accused of running a very strict and strenuous camp that has seen a frequent rise in injuries in players when it comes back to playing domestic football. Now, he has done his utmost best to swat away Christians and to defend his now depleted squad, saying that they're the best team in the world and he fancies their chances of winning the World Cup this year. Even though 15 players who have complained have been frozen out of the squad in excess of 5 months now. Now currently as of the recording of this video, there have been no players who have come out and said that they are not going to be in contention for selection for the World Cup. However, the Spanish Federation has released a statement which reads, The Real Federación Española de Fútbol communicates that, throughout today, it has received 15 emails from 15 players of the women's senior football team, coincidentally all with the same wording, in which they state that the current situation generated affects significantly their emotional state and their health, and that as long as it's not reversed, they resign from the national team. The RFEF is not going to allow the players to question the continuity of the national coach and his coaching staff, since making those decisions does not fall within their powers. The federation will not admit any type of pressure from any player when adopting sports measures. These types of maneuvers are far from exemplary and outside of the values of football and sports and are harmful. In accordance with current Spanish legislation, not attending a national team call is classified as a very serious infraction and can carry sanctions of between 2 and 5 years of disqualification. The RFEF, contrary to the way these players act, wants to make it clear that it will not take them to this extreme or pressure them. Directly, it will not summon the soccer players who do not want to wear the Spain shirt. The federation will only have committed footballers even if they have to play with youth. 
This fact has gone from being a sporting issue to a dignity issue. The selection is non-negotiable. It is an unprecedented situation in the history of football, both male and female, in Spain and worldwide. The national team meets players committed to the project, defending our colours and proud to wear the Spain shirt. The players who have submitted their resignation will only return to the discipline of the national team in the future if they accept their mistake and ask for forgiveness. Now that was quite the lengthy statement by the RFEF and quite justifiably so, they are defending themselves and their beliefs and their right to player selection as well as to defend the pride of Spanish football. However, in a situation like this, player welfare must come first. If these players, of which the RFEF has claimed that there are 15, that's literally a starting 11 and 4 substitutes, if they have come forward and said that the current conditions are not conducive to them getting the best results on the pitch and in training, then surely there needs to be an investigation done by the RFEF to actually see what is going on and why are these players complaining. I personally think that it's not justifiable to just stand behind your coach blindly like that because ultimately it's not the coach who plays, it's the players who play. And in a situation whereby fixtures are now starting to pile up on the regulars, not only for the men's side but for the women's side as well, player welfare is important. And if a player has a valid concern, in this case 15 players have the same valid concern, it must be investigated. But moving away from Spain, the same issues are also now going on in France, where there has been an entire hailstorm of controversy and pure bitterness between the former manager Corinne Dayak and some of her former players. These players in question are Marie Antoinette Katoto and Kadiatu Diani, apologies for butchering if I did, and the former French captain Wendy Renard who have all withdrew their contention from being selected for the 2023 World Cup and this was due to a current conflict with the former manager Corinne Dayak. The issues expressed by these three French players are reminiscent of the ones that we have just covered by the Spanish national team players who say that the current system in place is not conducive for their own well-being and for the performance on the pitch and in training. And this was in particular with Wendy Renard, who used to be the captain of France up until Corinne Dyack was appointed and subsequently stripped her of the captaincy in 2017. Now, I won't go into too much detail as to the issues that are happening within the French national team as they are very similar to the issues going on with the Spanish national team. However, there is a silver lining here as the French Federation has acted swiftly by sacking Corinne Dagger as a few days ago. And with that, it is hopeful that some of these players come back into contention. And Wendy Renata herself has said that she is open to now being called up now that Corinne Dagger has been sacked. But as of yet, France do not have a national team manager and we are just a few months away from the World Cup 4 if my math is correct. But apart from that, hopefully this is the start of a new standard that is adopted particularly by the Spanish national team and hopefully with any other issues that are being presented to the French Federation, they will be dealt with swiftly in order to ensure that the players are in the best possible environment for them to thrive on the national stage. And depending on how you see it, fortunately or unfortunately, the drama train keeps on rolling as FIFA, our good old friends in Switzerland, have recently backed out of a sponsorship deal with Visit Saudi, especially after player and organization and humanitarian organization backlash. Now unless you've been living under a rock, I really do not have to explain why this sponsorship would have been such a bad idea, but given the plethora of human rights violations and violations against women that Saudi Arabia have been accused and found guilty of by so many different humanitarian organizations in the past, and especially with recent times given the extensive push by Saudi Arabia to sports wash their image with the likes of Newcastle and the annual shows that they run with the WWE. Now since use of the sponsorship became public knowledge, Infantino went on the defensive to try and highlight the benefits, especially the financial benefits, that it would bring to the Women's World Cup and for women's football in general. 
but just like I mentioned before with the reasons as to why Saudi Arabia would not be a good sponsor for a women's World Cup, this was resolutely rejected by the masses, be it from the general public to players and many organizations, with even some players like Viviana Miedema of the Netherlands national team calling it an absolute shame and a disgrace if FIFA were to accept the sponsorship in the first place. Now FIFA and Gianni Infantino, they did eventually back down from striking a sponsorship deal with Visit Saudi. However, Infantino did make sure to point out the sort of hypocrisy that is associated with the rejection of the sponsorship deal, whereas Saudi Arabia and Australia have an active trade relationship, which is valued at $1.5 billion. And he had this to say, he said that this does not seem to be a problem, but between a global organization like FIFA and Visit Saudi, this would have been an issue. There's a double standard here, which I really don't understand. Now whilst Infantino may have a point here in highlighting that Saudi Arabia and Australia, who is one of the co-hosts of the World Cup this year, have an active trade relationship. It is kind of dumbfounded to make such a comparison between a political or economic trade relation and something that is purely sports centric because whilst he does have a good intention in trying to mitigate the massive pay gap between the women's world cup and the men's world cup but it really just comes across as someone being like a petulant child who's trying to justify the reason for punching another child when they were pinched or accidentally scratched the FIFA president here is undoubtedly putting himself in a very tough situation which can and will most likely come and bite him back in future. But apart from that, hopefully now with this disagreed deal between Visa Saudi and FIFA, a more reputable and hopefully less controversial sponsorship can be struck to help those, these women earn more money as they do deserve and hopefully start to further close the gap between the pay of the Women's World Cup and the men. And finally, whilst this video has been very dramatic and negative to the greater extent, we finish our wrap up here with a very very positive and encouraging story as Haiti, yes Haiti, H-A-I-T-I have qualified for the Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand this year. And this was against a recent match for qualification against Chile, which Haiti won 2-1, thanks to a fantastic brace by the 19-year-old starlet Melchi Dumonet, who actually recently signed with Olympic Lyonnais Femina, and is surely on her way to becoming one of the next great stars in women's football. This is undoubtedly a very great achievement and all of the women on that pitch and in that team deserve so much adulation and congratulations and for me personally I would like to wish them the best in this World Cup tournament and that no matter what the outcome is in the end they have made themselves and the global footballing community very very proud. That is going to be it for today's special wrap up of the World Cup. I'll be making a few videos very soon to go into depth with the current controversies going on within the national federations and hopefully you will enjoy those as they come out in the coming weeks. But other than that, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe and I'll see you next time.